Hi, I'm Debbie Hughes and I wanted to take a moment to say thank you. This will be my first video of 2021 on this channel and I couldn't do what I do without you guys calling by. Not only that, but you are so supportive with thumbs up and comments. I read everyone and they're all very much appreciated. I do try and answer any questions, so if you have anything you want to ask, pop it in the comments below. OK, I'm starting the year off with a watercolour painting card tutorial but before I get to that, I wanted to show you a quick overview of what is in the new Love You Too release from Samsa Stamp. And I'll be using some of these new products to create my card. So starting off with two new packs of sequins, a lovely opulent gold mix and a sweet pink mix. Next is a die that I haven't tried yet, but to me it looks like it will build a base for a box card. More on that in a minute. I like the thank you for being a friend die as it's all connected together, making it easy to add your card. A lovely chunky birthday die from Kathy Zilski and this has the background die to match. I love the boho circle stencil from the last release and so I am delighted to see a boho circle die. There are lots of options for this as it cuts out the design without cutting out the circle itself. Ah, there we are, the box card borders to give you lots of options for making a layered 3D scene in your cards. Snowflake Season is a die to match a stamp set that was released as part of the January card kit. The kit is sold out, but you can get the stamp set separately. Here's a leprechaun to join in the St. Patrick's Day fun later in the year. Next we have the Reveal Wheel window dies with lots of different size options. I love all the encouraging sentiments and the You Are Simply The Best has a gorgeous handwritten look and the background die to match. I've always been a fan of pillow boxes and so I'm glad to see this staple coming back into fashion. Moving on to the stamp sets and first up is the lovely All Season Trees with several tree silhouettes to play with and some leaf images to add on too. Kathy's at it again with her spot on humour with a sassy flap set and lots of greeting options to add to your envelopes. The Magnolia Cottage set is a set I'm itching to break open, a fabulous jug as a base for a floral arrangement, but the fun part is there are options to make the jug into a little cottage. The wonderful banner set is aptly named. I like the openness of the flowers to add my own take on shading and such. Talking of flowers, take a look at the Sweet Friend set. I am so happy to see all the florals coming back in again. They're some of my most favourites to use. The Better Together Slim Mind Friend set is adorable and has multiple options of greetings to add to the sign the little girl in the middle is holding. Moving on to the large 6x8 sets and the forest scenery set, images are so elegant and would look perfect stamped over an ink blended background. We spend most of the time on the outside of the car but the inside is often overlooked. No longer though with the Inside Friendship Messages set. The last large set is the Best Friend Ever set and I'll be using this set today. There are four lovely flower sprigs and a few greetings too. Okay, on to the stencils and here's where I'm going to be a bit vague on the product names as everything is so brand new. But we can take a peek anyway. This envelope has two stencils, one with hearts and one with stars and they are a great size for card fronts. I mentioned St. Patrick's Day earlier and the clover stencil is here for the job. Different clover patterns and also different clover sizes too. The Hearts and Streamers stencil has two stencils, one with hearts dangling from the top and one with streamers. The next stencil is this great slimline borders one with dots, stars, stripes and grid options. And finally, quite appropriate for the season here in Scotland, is this large raindrop stencil. Moving on and there's the next edition in the Susie's Watercolour Print series. Such cute images of little girls with their pet dogs and cats. There are two of each of six designs in the pack. Next we have two sentiment strip packs, one in black on white and one in white on black. Each pack contains two of two different designs. I forgot to mention while going through the stamp sets that there are dies to some of them. The Better Together Slimline Friends set Sweet Friend, Wonderful Banner and Magnolia Cottage all have matching dies. I did mention that these products are hot off the press. As I was making today's card, a parcel arrived with more to share with you. Here we have three cling background stamps, Heart Garden and XOXO background. How do you say that? Hugs and kisses? Knots and crosses? 
And finally, the Radiating Hearts background. I've loved the slimline card trend. It mixes things up a little and breaks us out of our rut, creating the same size cards every time. So I'm intrigued to try these petite slimline envelopes in pink, yellow and white. I can see me trying this cute size out. OK, that is all for the quick run through of the new products. Let's get right on to making of today's card. And I know how much you love it when I get my watercolours out. So I used the Best Friend Ever set as I really wanted to paint that gorgeous peony. I took a sheet of Arches watercolour card and cut a piece 5.5 inches by 4 and a quarter, the size of an A2 card front, although I'll be trimming this down later. From a piece of Arches card you can get four card fronts plus a spare scrapper card, perfect for testing swatches on. I stamped the peony image from the Best Friend Ever set in Antique Linen Distress Ink. I always keep fresh jars of water next to me when painting to keep my brush clean and I'm starting off with the leaves. Always my favourite part to begin a painting. They ground the image and I find them easier to paint than flowers and so a great place to start and warm up on. I use Daniel Smith paints and for the leaves I picked my favourite undersea green. I created a light mixture and brought this to the paper, spreading the colour out initially, then rinsing my brush a little and spreading the colour out over the rest of the leaf. I added a darker mixture to the base of the leaf and along one side to create shadows and then left this leaf to dry while I moved on to the next. I continued to paint the leaves in this fashion, getting a base layer down before moving on to the petals. I painted the base layer for the petals in pretty much the same way using a mix of pyro crimson along with whatever was left on my palette. I leave the majority of the painting in this video speeded up so it's not too long. I'll play some music for now and I'll be back shortly.
You'll have seen that I added a dark layers of paint over the base layer, slowly building up the shapes of the leaves and flowers, adding interest, different colours, and the hint of the pink flower reflecting on the leaves below. For the petals, I add deeper areas of colour along the frilly petal edges and in the deep nooks where petals join each other. Lots of little details, all adding up to a finished piece. I added white gouache details to the tips of the flower anthers. I used a dilute mix of white gouache over some of the petals and leaves. I used leftover paint and white gouache to splatter over the piece. I tried to keep the splatter moving with the flow of the flower in a diagonal across the card. By accident, I smudged one of the paint splatters and rather liked how it looked, and so I smudged another one of the splatters too so it looked more intentional. I then used Perfect Pearls pigment powder and mixed it up with a little water to splatter over the panel as well. These droplets look lovely and subtly sparkly when they catch the light. I don't think I've shared this with you yet. This is a new card from Simon. It's deeply embossed wood grain craft card and I cut and scored an A2 card base from it. I also trimmed down the watercoloured card front to leave a border when mounted on the card base. I paired the card front and card base with a green envelope and also a piece of ivory card to use on the inside of the card. For the inside of the card, I chose a greeting from the Inside Friendship Messages set and stamped it in Versifying Claire Pinecone ink. I thought a rich chocolate ink suited this card better than a black ink. For the envelope, I chose a greeting from the Sassy Flap set, treated the envelope with anti-static powder before stamping the sentiment in clear embossing ink and sprinkling with white embossing powder. I used a hot heat tool to quickly melt the embossing powder. Finally, to put this card together, I added the card front to the card base with foam tape and the inside panel with a glue runner. The sentiment for the front of the card is often the last thing I add on. Today I picked out a nice general greeting which could be used for so many occasions from the forest scenery set. I pulled out a scrap of dark chocolate card, always keep your scraps for such occasions, and treated it with anti-static powder, stamped the sentiment in clear embossing ink, sprinkled with white embossing powder and heat set. I trimmed out the sentiment using a ruler with a metal edge and a scalpel. I added the sentiment to the card with more foam tape and then for a little embellishment I added cotton candy glosses from Julie Hickey and pink enamel dots from Hero Arts along with a couple of eggshell pearls. I used a jewel picker tool to help me attach the pearls and kept them in place with Gina K Connect glue. Okay that's me for today, a simple watercolour peony handmade card with a friendship message inside and a greeting on the envelope too. There are links in the YouTube description to the products that I've used today as well as a coordinating link to the blog post over at limedoodledesign.com where you'll find more details of this card as well as the new I Love You Too release. I want to thank you for joining me and if you've enjoyed this tutorial I'd be delighted if you'd give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel. Also if you would like to get notified when a new video is out don't forget to hit the bell button next to the subscribe button too. Thanks and I'll see you next time.